come on in. Today we're gonna to shoot some eight x 10 Polaroid. Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Marash, and if this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, here's a playlist of our entire second season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna talk about something new in the world of large format. Today, I'm joined by two of my coworkers, Ms. Cheyenne Banks and Mr. Taylor Kuby, and we're here in a familiar-ish location. If you've stayed tuned to Large Format Live a few months ago, we were in here doing a live studio shoot, and while today's not live, we're gonna be shooting one of my favorite formats, which is eight by 10 Polaroid. We're gonna go through the process, how to do it, what gear you need, and hopefully see some results with some not so fresh and fresh films. So one of the first and most obvious tools that we're gonna to need to shoot 8x10 Polaroid is an 8x10 camera. One of the largest misconceptions about 8x10 Polaroid is that you need a specialty camera for it. Since 8x10 Polaroid just uses specialty holders, we don't actually need a specialty camera. Anything that takes an ANSI or just standardized or universal 8x10 back will take these holders. They're a bit of a different holder than we might be used to, but we'll get to that in a sec. Today we're using my Studio Beast, the Cinar, because we're gonna change out various different focal lengths and I'm not gonna be the only one operating the camera. I brought Cheyenne and Taylor because they're both super interested in large format. Cheyenne just bought her first large format camera and Taylor, he's gonna get initiated in probably the best way possible with large format today. We're all gonna be shooting some frames. Well, we don't have any models, but that's fine. We're all gonna hold really still for each other for these shots and see what we can get. So it's not just that we're gonna need an eight x 10 camera. One of the biggest barriers to jumping into eight x 10 Polaroid is the need for specialty equipment. We need a specialty holder. Uh, there's two different ones that are popular for this. We have the 8105 and then this guy, which is the 8106. Both of them are holders that are able to open and take individual sheets of negative material. We've got light seals in here. We've got a little tongue. This is for holding our envelope once we load it. And this allows us to daylight load our films. And then this machine here is to daylight process the exposures we made. Essentially what we're doing is we have a negative we load into our holder and then a positive sheet that we load into the bottom of this tray. And then we sandwich the two together by pushing it through these really giant rollers right here. Those get shot through very quickly and evenly with the press of a button. And then after about five minutes or so, they come out this side. So it's very similar to the crack and peel Polaroid, except we're not cracking and peeling. This type film is like integral where there's gonna be a positive and negative that are sandwiched together. And then one of the layers is transparent. So we've got our holder here and we have a box of film here. Inside this box, I have two separate aluminum sleeves. One contains my positives. That's what has the pods and spreads everything across and the final paper. You always wanna put your pods on top and protect them. And then underneath that, we have a box of negatives. Ooh, a spare one, mystery. So the negative material is hiding inside this paper envelope and it has this black paper tongue right there. That's what catches in the holder. So we're gonna load up some film now. I'm gonna open my book form holder. And the way this loads is super duper simple. All we need to do is place this guy right here so we can see our arrows. That way we know to pull it out. We wanna make sure our tongue is catching right here. Close our book. Usually wanna hear a nice little satisfying click. And then once we're there, we're gonna to start to pull our envelope out. Two hands is usually better than one. All right, and you see how it's catching right there? Normally, if it didn't catch, I'd be pulling film through. I pull it out and I have an empty envelope now because the film is loaded in here. If you pull it out too far, you'll usually get a flap of excess film, but this was loaded pretty decently. So one of the first things we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to meter out our shot. Now, this film is not like black and white negative film, color negative film, or even slide film. The dynamic range of this is super duper limited. We're talking three to four stops. So even slide film has more exposure latitude than this positive film. And that's because we have a negative and a positive reagent. So kind of like a monobath, all kept inside these little pods of this paste that just kind of squeezes across 
the negative and develops out and then adheres to the clear side. So we have less dynamic range to work with, which means we have to be very, very precise in our metering. And typically lighting scenarios that you would be used to as not very contrasty will show up incredibly contrasty on this. So normally where I just have one big key light, I'm actually gonna have a big key light and a really, really close bright fill in order to keep that ratio as close to one to one or the same intensity as possible. If they're not, I'm gonna get really harsh shadows and the drop off is just gonna like, we're gonna lose any subject matter whatsoever. Our ISO set to 640 on there because that's what this film's gonna be. And let's see what our light's looking like. Yeah, so we were losing a little like a few tenths of a stop just because we were in the way of the fill light and we're about f11-ish. Now of course in the world of large format f11 isn't really f11 when we're this close to our subject because we have that lovely thing called bellows extension factor. If you want to find out more about that I'm going to drop a link up above to the bellows extension factor video so you can be prepared for all of this extra compensation that we're going to be doing. Basically the closer we get with the bellows the more we rack them out the more we're going to have to add even more to our exposure or open up our aperture to cover that. Cool, so we got our final framing uh, where we want it. I'm really tight head and shoulder shot on Taylor right now. And with, with being this close, we're losing about a stop and a half of light to our bellows factor. I've metered my light for F16, which puts my real exposure a little closer to F8, about F8 and a half. So change my aperture on here from 6.8 to 8 and a half. And now I'm ready to load up a shot and see what happens. So the Polaroid holder is gonna go in. So it fits the standard size film holder. One thing that is unique about this type film holder is we've got a blue dark slide here and these dark slides are not meant to be removed the entire way. There's gonna be a little blue warning line letting me know when the dark slide's out far enough. And it's right there. Okay, I'm gonna have Taylor, actually, can I have you eyes almost directing right here but just a little bit closer to the lens, perfect. Right there, yeah, give me that nice little squinch going on. Ready, one, and there we go. All right, push that down. Try not to hurt the paper once that's going back in, and let's get it processed. Now we need to process the shot we just took. First step, we need to take our positive out of here and load it into our tray. When you're opening this and rifling through it, don't press down too hard with your fingers because you might crush one of the pods. So I've got my piece of paper right here and we can see it's transparent. And this is the part we don't want to touch because those are our pods, those three little guys right there. And we're actually going to load it this side up. That's how it's going to catch. So bring this down. Pod side first. Bring this down right until it stops, right there. And I'm gonna grab my exposed holder. And that's gonna go on top of this. There's a little ramp to make sure it doesn't crush the pods. And there's these little knurled parts on the holder that let us know it's okay to pull across. Push that in. All right, so we are loaded, we are loaded. Three, two, one. All right, we'll see everybody in five minutes. So unlike other instant films, or well, the original Polaroid 8x10, this film is especially light sensitive. So the original Polaroid would be done in about two minutes or so. This stuff needs at least five minutes in as close to complete darkness as possible, and that's why we have this kind of shielded area here. In the older Polaroid, you could go ahead and pull the holder out early and open this up early, but this stuff, you want to keep it as dark as long as possible to give it a good chance of having the right look. Oh, finally. It's because we're doing other stuff. All right, let's see what we got. Oh no. No, we, no, we got, Im we got impossible is, is okay. what we got. <laughs> no, so this is very common for this film. Uh, you get some discoloration in here. So these two pods, it always dries out from the outside in. So mm -hmm. these two pods are like bleh, pretty much gone. They usually like mix. So you don't see this delineation between there, but 
So sorry. Okay, let's pull our holder out and check our rollers. You always want to make sure that your rollers are squeaky clean between takes. So we'll roll these, you get a little rusty. You want to just take a damp paper towel and then a dry paper towel and kind of run it through. Uh, microfiber cloths are even better because you're not going to get as much lint on the rollers that way. Because this lens is so big and so fast. Um, oh, did you want to shoot it at, do you want it sharp or soft? Uh, sharp. At sharp mode, it's a 16 inch or 406 millimeter F3.8. Okay. Now 3.8 is wild fast and it's actually gonna be too fast for a lot of what we're doing here with natural light. So we're gonna front mount the shutter so we can flash sync it. Okay. But to front mount the shutter, that shutter has a smaller opening than the front of our lens. Yeah, so we're gonna kind of stop the lens down to account for that. Okay. I calculated what that was last week and it's actually now going to be a 16 inch F5.6. So essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna position this in a way that it's kind of filling, filling that frame up. We're gonna use this recessed little bit to kind of get in the way of it. Okay. So we're gonna mount this guy right there. Drop that down. So now we actually have kind of a little shade yeah. that's right in front of it.
So we're out of our black and white test film. There was quite a few bad pods there and we've already run through our entire box of color film. There's some small flub ups along the way, but overall, I'm really happy with the results we got. This is definitely a unique film. And you know, a lot of folks will say, oh my gosh, this is so expensive. 20 bucks a shot, is it worth it? And I mean, is there anywhere else you can go where somebody can make you an eight by 10 color original that has this beautiful palette of color you can't get anywhere else? You, you can't. And at 20 bucks a shot, really, it's its own end point. It's not a proofing medium, it is the medium. It is the finished result. So think of it like an original, like you would with a wet plate or a dry plate. It's just this really unique thing. I'm so, so happy to have had Tariq and Cheyenne and Taylor, thank you guys so much for coming in and helping me with this today. Thanks again to Tariq for loaning us the studio and letting, him, letting us get the blue chemical pods all over the place. We'll hopefully clean her up. But if you have any questions about how this 8x10 Polaroid stuff works, or if you want to see more instant stuff like this on the channel, let me know down below in the comments. And if you have any other questions pertaining to large format, you can always feel free to hit me up, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by, and we'll catch you next time for more LFF.